This morning, back in business, Sydney's first full day of freedom. Pubs, restaurants and hairdressers packed as crowds queue across the city, but a warning of soaring case numbers. Melbourne's vaccine push, major changes to the rollout as severe COVID cases climb. Border Hope, Queensland has given its clearest indication yet of when their tough rules will ease. And weather warning, Australia's east coast set for a drenching with storms and a month's worth of rain on the way. This is 7 News with Jody Spears. Good morning. New South Wales has declared itself open for business as it leads the nation out of lockdown. Friends, families and couples were reunited with pubs and retailers packed across the city. The state now firmly on track to hit the next major milestone with more freedoms to come once the 80% target is hit. After so long, finally that sweet taste of freedom. <laughs> restaurants the toast of the town as Sydney celebrated the end of 106 days locked up. We're also glad that everyone's uh, getting back to the uh, hospitality. From the city to the suburbs, the queues enormous, people needed retail therapy. The doors rolled up, the covers came off. It's the best feeling to be shopping again and being out of the house, it's amazing. But it was Sydney's salons most in demand. Oh man, it's the best thing ever, eh? Like it was just getting out of control. Thousands of retail staff back at work, checking vaccine certificates. Greater Sydney also on the road again. It's nice to get some freedom back and um, get back on the road. Caravan parks and camping grounds reopened to fully vaccinated travellers. But perhaps the most special freedom moments at our nursing homes. Long time no see, eh? Yeah, how long? Nearly four months. Four months apart, after 68 years married, Jen and Peter Blacklock united again. The sweetest of reunions on a day like no other. It felt wrong, wrong that you've been together for so long and then suddenly you can't, you can't be. Gina Trahan, Seven News. There's been a major change to help speed up Victoria's vaccine rollout. Pfizer and Moderna jabs will now be given to anybody over the age of 12. It means over 60s will be eligible for those vaccines too. They were previously only able to book AstraZeneca. The new changes follow the success of the rollout on school age students. That's therefore allowed us to now essentially throw open the doors to mRNA vaccines at all points of contact. Vaccine passports are also being trialled in six council areas across Victoria. Queensland has given its strongest hint yet on when the state will reopen its borders. The Health Minister says it's critical for unvaccinated Queenslanders to get the jab soon. The target is getting yourself protected in the next five to six weeks. That is your mission, get yourself protected and that helps protect our whole community and allows us to open up. Queensland is yet to commit to opening its borders once vaccination coverage reaches 80%. A new exemption has been made to the public health order to make life easier for New South Wales residents who enter the ACT for work or medical care. Residents who've been in the ACT for those reasons will no longer need to complete a declaration or follow stay at home rules. The rules do not apply to non-New South Wales residents. Contact tracers are right now going over the movements of a COVID-positive mine worker who flew into Adelaide. Authorities say she wasn't at the airport for long, but she did catch a taxi to a hotel in the city. There are also concerns tonight about two unvaccinated infected truck drivers in country South Australia who failed to check in at any of the stops they made. The Prime Minister is leading calls for unity among the coalition to combat climate change and commit to net zero emissions. Let's go live now to political reporter Taylor Aiken in Canberra. Good morning, Taylor. They'll require support from the Nationals. They will, Jody. Good morning. And the Nationals have shown they aren't prepared to put jobs in regional Australia at risk. But in a sign that a deal may be getting closer, the Prime Minister says the coalition must come together to combat climate change and embrace new global energy economies, also pledging to protect regional communities in the transition to a net zero future. Scott Morrison is under increasing pressure to commit to a net zero emissions target by 2050, 
head of a climate conference in Glasgow next month. But the Prime Minister has indicated he is still unsure whether he will even attend that conference, drawing some surprise from royal climate advocates. Scott Morrison, the Australian PM, isn't even certain that he could make it to the meeting in Glasgow? I, is that what he said? Is he? he did say, yeah. Mm. Scott Morrison knows that he will need to come up with a plan soon if he is to attend the Glasgow conference with a new energy policy in hand. Jody. OK, Taylor Aiken in Canberra, thank you. A Victorian government minister has lost his job in Cabinet following fresh allegations of branch stacking. Labor MP Luke Donnellan has resigned, moving to the backbench after being accused of paying party membership fees on behalf of others at an anti-corruption inquiry. Donnellan admits he broke the rules as a minister but says he never misused public funds. Federal Labor member Anthony Byrne also admitted to being aware of rigged party ballots during the inquiry. More than 280 Australian citizens and permanent residents remain in Afghanistan almost two months after the Taliban seized power. Officials told a parliamentary hearing in Canberra that 129 Australians and 157 permanent residents have registered with the federal government. The hearing heard many are unwilling to leave because they're still trying to get visas for other family members. Around 100,000 Afghans are seeking safe haven in Australia. Australia's east coast is in for a soaking this week with a month's worth of rain predicted in the space of a few days. Brisbane, Sydney and Melbourne can expect a soggy week with north eastern New South Wales to be hit the hardest. Byron, Ballina, Tweed and Lismore could see around 100 millimetres of rain. A quick check of sport now and Cricket Australia expects the Ashes to go ahead in full with crowds. After months of negotiations, England have all but confirmed they'll tour Australia this summer. But CA says state border blocks won't cause a reshuffle of venues with Perth's test to remain after Melbourne and Sydney's. There's been a huge amount of work over many, many months to get to this point and I think yeah, everyone is just really now looking looking forward to that first ball in uh, the Gabba on the 8th of March. The Gabba test starts on December the 8th. Checking Tuesday's weather now. Rain at times in Brisbane today, a top of 20 degrees. A shower or two in Sydney heading for 19. Partly cloudy in Canberra, 15. Partly cloudy in both Melbourne and Hobart. Adelaide, mostly sunny, a top of 23. Cloudy and 18 the top in Perth. And mostly sunny, 34 degrees in Darwin. Coming up on 7 Early News, a check of finance plus social media safety, major changes for Facebook and Instagram to protect children, and the vital technology to help manage COVID, how Tap and Go could tell you if you're in a virus hotspot instantly. The stories we're following on early news, Sydney has enjoyed its first full day of freedom with businesses back up and running across the city. Fully vaccinated residents now looking forward to further liberties once the 80% double dose target is reached. Victoria's vaccine rollout is getting a major boost with Pfizer and Moderna now available to anyone over the age of 12. The Queensland Government has warned residents they have just six weeks to get vaccinated in the clearest indication yet for the border reopening. And the Prime Minister is leading calls for unity among the coalition to combat climate change. More than one million Australians have rushed into the vaccine lottery just one week after the competition launched. A group of philanthropists and corporations funded what's called the Million Dollar Vax Alliance in a bid to boost the country's vaccine rate. The big prize will be drawn in November. The winner needs to be fully immunised by December the 13th to claim the million dollars. After damning testimony about its impact on young users, Facebook has unveiled new safety controls for kids. There'll soon be a take a break warning prompting kids to get off Instagram, plus moves to address its own research that shows the app is harming children's mental health. We're going to introduce something which I think will make a considerable difference, which is where our systems see that a teenager a teen is looking at the same content over and over again and it's content which may not be conducive to their well-being. We will nudge them to look at other content. There will also be new optional controls for adults to supervise what teenagers are doing online. 
Many Australians use tap and go every day and now it could play a key role in stopping the spread of COVID. In a global first, an Australian company has created a free service that alerts you in real time if you've used your card at an exposure site. Quick and easy and the new tool to help trace. This is a very simple uh, solution to a difficult problem. Tech company Adatree has created COVID Hotspot Alert, a free service giving Australians instant peace of mind. So you don't have to think, where was I on that certain day at time? Um, it's a set it and forget it service. Using data from your recent card purchases, the service notifies users who use their cards at an exposure site. People are notified within 90 seconds. It's received federal government backing who say it will help provide faster and more reliable alerts than manual contact tracing. But cyber safety experts warn it could also open the door to potential SMS scams. We get conditioned as a community to accepting unsolicited SMS messages with embedded links. The crooks are all taken care of it. The technology is launching today in New South Wales and will be rolled out in Queensland and Victoria by the end of the month. Australians can now register online with all the big banks on board. It's one more step towards uh, a life of COVID normal. Gaining control one tap at a time. Brittany Lane, 7 News. Checking finance now. The Dow Jones is trading slightly down this morning. The Nasdaq is up. In London, the FTSE added. Germany's DAX lost. Closer to home, Japan's Nikkei closed higher. Hong Kong's Hang Seng rose. The All Lords finished slightly down, as did the ASX 200. On the commodities market, gold is trading at 1,755 US dollars an ounce. Oil is 81 US dollars a barrel. The Aussie dollar is buying 73.56 US cents, 83 Japanese yen, and $1.05 New Zealand. Coming up on 7 Early News, the COVID wonder drug, a first of its kind treatment, a step closer to approval. We cross live to the US next. And Star Trek actor William Shatner prepares to head to the final frontier. The stories we're following on early news, Sydney businesses are back up and running as residents enjoy their first full day of freedom. The next step in the roadmap will be when the state hits 80% double dose in a week's time. Pfizer and Moderna are now available to anyone over the age of 12 in Victoria in a major boost to the vaccine rollout. The Queensland government has given its clearest indication yet for the border reopening, warning its residents they have just six weeks to get vaccinated. And the Prime Minister is leading calls for unity among the coalition to combat climate change. There's fresh hope for more than 200,000 Australians with Parkinson's disease. Researchers say cannabis could be the key to stopping the disorder in its tracks. Sufferers will be given a non-intoxicating component of the drug in a new trial on the Gold Coast. It's hoped the treatment will become the first to not only alleviate symptoms, but stop the disease from developing further. Taking a pill to treat COVID-19 could soon be a reality, with pharmaceutical giant Merck applying for authorisation in the US. Let's go live now to US correspondent Tim Lester for more details. Good morning, Tim. The new treatment could be available within months. Good morning, Jody. Yes, this is Molnupiravir. Now, Merck had a global trial among more than 700 COVID-19 sufferers to see how this drug would work. It proved so successful in preventing uh, hospitalisations that uh, Merck has taken it out of the trial and sought today official approval from the US Food and Drug Administration to begin using it. Among countries to already make purchases, Australia has lined up for 300 100,000 uh, courses of the drug. As well, the US has ordered 1.7 million other countries queuing up in excitement. The FDA's approval, though, of course, is a necessary prerequisite here in the US and is watched around the world to see how that goes. But emergency approval now underway for the first oral pill 
to treat COVID-19. The FDA has a few other uh, issues with regard to COVID on its agenda in coming days. It will study whether uh, a second or booster dose or third dose in the case of Moderna uh, should be approved for the Moderna vaccine and the one dose Johnson and Johnson vaccine uh, already here in the United States uh, in a limited way there is approval for a booster dose of the Pfizer vaccine. Jody. All sounds promising. Okay, thanks Tim. Britain's Met Police have dropped their investigation into allegations of sexual abuse against Prince Andrew. Police reviewed several documents, including one relating to the US civil lawsuit launched by Virginia Goofrey. She alleges she was forced to have sex with the prince when she was 17 years old. Prince Andrew has always denied the allegations. Four huge cooling towers at a power station in the UK have been demolished in a spectacular controlled implosion. The four towers at Eggborough in Yorkshire came crashing down in a cloud of smoke and debris. It took more than nine months of planning to demolish the 91 metre high structures. Star Trek actor William Shatner has undergone his last training session before he heads to the final frontier. The 90-year-old actor is preparing for liftoff with three other crew members aboard the Blue Origin. The launch of the new Shepard vehicle will take place tomorrow in Texas. To Sport Now and Cricket Australia expects the Ashes to go ahead in full with crowds. After months of negotiations, England have all but confirmed they will tour Australia this summer. But CA says state border blocks won't cause a reshuffle of venues, with Perth's test to remain after Melbourne and Sydney's. The first test at the Gabba starts on December the 8th. Getting the wicket of Virat Kohli, A.B. de Villiers or Glenn Maxwell would be a career highlight for most bowlers. West Indies' Sunil Narine took all three in a single innings in Kolkata's IPL elimination playoff against Bangalore. And it's taken, it's taken, that's Maxwell gone. Sunil Narine is having the time of his life here in Charger. Narine followed his forfer with a quick fire 26 runs as Kolkata beat Bangalore by four wickets and moved within a win of the final. The Redcliffe Dolphins bid have denied reports they're set to be named the NRL's 17th team this week. The ARL Commission meets on Thursday where it's expected to announce who gets the licence, with the Dolphins the heavy frontrunners. The Proven Summons Trophy is now residing in the trophy cabinet at Panthers Leagues Club after some quick repairs stemming from the club's grand final celebrations. And Penrith star Nathan Cleary will have shoulder surgery tomorrow, which could sideline him until the early rounds of next season. The Socceroos are out to extend their world record winning streak to 12 matches against fierce rivals Japan in Saitama tonight. Coach Graham Arnold expects the dream run through World Cup qualifying to continue. Because I expect 12 straight tomorrow night, so why, why celebrate or reflect on something that's not over? In rare form and with the Samurai Blues struggling, they'll never get a better chance to notch their first win over Japan in more than a decade. The NBL has pushed back the start of its new season a few weeks, but it's good news for basketball fans. The new season will begin on December 3 with Tasmania's new team to play the Adelaide 36ers in the opener in Hobart. But the NBL expects fans will be allowed back into the stadiums to cheer on their teams. The new season will also see NBA championship winner Matthew Della Vadova play in Australia for the first time since 2009. A boost for racing fans with crowds for Saturday's $15 million Everest race doubled to 10,000 people at Randwick. One person who wouldn't look out of place in the race, flowing mane included, is sprinter Rowan Browning. The Olympian proving manpower can overcome horsepower, beating Everest runner Lost and Running, ridden by champion jockey Hugh Bowman in a handicap sprint on the Randwick straight. Hearing those hoofs come down was just thunderous and, you know, I was definitely driven by, by fear more than anything else. Saturday's Everest race is live on 7. Coming up on 7 Early News, a closer look at how the weather's shaping up in your part of the country. 
The saying happy wife, happy life is one that a husband in Bosnia has taken very seriously. He designed and built the family home with a very special feature. It can rotate a full circle on its seven metre axis. The ingenious invention is a monument to love, satisfying his wife's desires to change the view whenever she wishes. The house makes a full circle in 24 hours at its slowest speed and in 22 seconds when it's going flat out. <laughs> Taking a look at the weather around the country now, a trough extending over the north and east will generate rain and thunderstorms in the Northern Territory, Queensland and New South Wales, some intense. A high will clear much of Victoria and Tasmania and keep South Australia dry, leading to a chilly morning. A front will bring brisk winds, a colder change and showers to southwestern WA. Around the capitals today, rain at times heading for 20 degrees in Brisbane, a shower or two in Sydney, a top of 19 degrees, partly cloudy in Canberra with a top of 15, partly cloudy in Melbourne, a top of 21, and Hobart, 17, Adelaide mostly sunny and 23, cloudy and 18 the top in Perth, and mostly sunny, a top of 34 degrees in Darwin. And that's 7 Early News for this Tuesday, the 12th of October. I'm Jody Spears. Now it's time for Sunrise with Koshi and Nat. New overnight, the taste of freedom. Families and friends.